Hello everyone, it's Axel from Seger. In this video, I'd like to talk about the gauge object in AppWizard. And with MWIN and AppWizard, you can make some pretty nice gauges. And gauges are definitely an important element. In a GUI, you can use them to indicate all sorts of things like pressure, temperature, humidity, or what have you. And here we have a gauge that's actually used in combination with a rotary to indicate the angle by which the rotary has been turned. If you would like to add a gauge to your own GUI, what you can do is go over here to the objects window and click on the gauge object and it will be placed in your editor and you can move it to wherever you need the gauge to go. Now if you just try out the gauge in our handy play mode, nothing's really happening because the gauge is an output element. So it's indicating status information, but it needs to be provided with this information. So I have this slider here already in my GUI, and I'd like to add an interaction that feeds this slider information also to my gauge. So what I can do is add an interaction that says when my slider value changes, I would like to set that value into my gauge. And now if we use the play mode, we can see that the gauge is indeed following the slider. It doesn't look so good yet, but we'll work on that in a little bit. So let's look at the properties that we have with our gauge. You have the gauge ID, you have the position, you have the anchor point, and then you have a bunch of other properties that you can set. For the gauge, we actually do not have bitmaps like for so many other widgets in AppWizard. So the gauge is completely customizable with the properties that we'll take a look at now. The first thing I want to do to make our gauge look a little better with the slider that we have is to change the initial value from 250 to zero. And also I will change the span of values from 0 to 999 to just simply 100. And now if we look at our play mode, we see that our gauge already looks a bit better here, given the information that's coming from the slider. By default, AppWizard gives you a gauge that spans 180 degrees. If you would like to change that shape, you can adjust the start and end angle of your gauge with this property over here. So if we would like to have a slightly different shape, for example, let's do minus 200 here for the 10th of degree start angle and 2000 for the end angle. And then you can see that the shape of our gauge has changed towards more of a circle. And it still works just like before, just with a slightly different shape. By default, the radius is 80 pixels, but you can make your gauge bigger or smaller by changing the radius. So if you would like that slightly smaller, I can go to 50 and you can see our gauge has changed in diameter to make it a little smaller. I can also, of course, adjust the colors that should go into my gauge. So this item zero is the inactive part of the gauge and I can change that, let's say, to white. And I can change the active part of my gauge to something else, for example, red. And again, our gauge has changed its appearance by changing those properties. 
You can also individually change the width of the active and inactive part of the gauge. So width zero refers to the width of this white part here and width one would be the red part. So if I would like to have this a little thicker, I could do 30 for the white part and 25 for the red part. And again, our gauge looks different. You can make some more adjustments like the edges. By default, they are rounded. You get rounded ends and rounded value. You can modify that if you want to have flat ends. So again, that's a way to customize your gauge. And finally, you can also set a background color if you want by changing that attribute here. So now I have my gauge on a green background if that's what I would want. When working with a gauge, it's best to work with a variable. So you can use a variable in AppWizard and we could call that our gauge variable and we can do another interaction that says whenever the gauge variable changes its value we can also set that value into our gauge so now when you use the app wizard api in your user code to change the gauge variable then this interaction will make sure that the gauge will be updated on the GUI accordingly. Let's take a look at the other signals and jobs that are associated with the gauge. So here are the signals that the gauge can emit. And then here are the various jobs or actions you can take when that signal gets emitted by your gauge. And as always, you can take a look at the AppWizard user guide to find out more information about all these jobs. If you'd like to add a numeric value to your gauge to indicate a status, the easiest way is to use one of these text boxes in decimal mode and place it in the area of your gauge and that way you have a nice numeric indication of whatever it is you're indicating with your gauge. So in a nutshell, this is what I wanted to tell you about the gauge object. I hope you like this video. Please check out our other videos on AppWizard. Thanks for watching.